Scratch is, is a very special game for me. I've known about it for around 12 years, and in those 12 years I've played every kind of horror game there is. Adventure, action, puzzle, sci-fi, fantasy, Lovecraftian, gimmicky, good, bad, old, new, cliched, unorthodox, indie, triple-A, and whatever the hell agony was. And that is to say, it's not too easy to impress me anymore. That being said, after 12 years, I finally played Scratches, this semi-obscure, mixed-reviewed, unpurchasable Argentinian indie game from 2006, and I have never been more impressed. So let's start the game, and let me show you what Scratches is all about. Now, uh, quick note, there happens to be something of an elephant in the room we have just entered, that being the aspect ratio and resolution of the game. Unfortunately, I don't think you're able to change those without wreaking virtual Ragnarok upon the game. Now, while playing the game, I stopped noticing this after a few seconds, but I understand watching a video is a bit of a different beast, so I'm gonna zoom it in a bit. It's gonna cut off the subtitles at the bottom, but honestly, that's probably for the best, because that means less spoilers for you guys. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. So the game opens with us being shown a fair amount of film grain and some pictures while the opening credits roll. And the highlight of this section is finding out that the music was developed by a seller of rats. And what talented rats they are, because this game's music is super not pleasant. And I mean that in the best possible way. It's creepy as shit. A perfect example of this is the pause menu music. Now, in most horror games, the pause menu would have some understated and slightly creepy music, or maybe just complete silence. But in Scratches, we get this. Ah, let's take a break from this scary horror game. Let's take a break from the scary horror pause menu. And after the opening credits, we drive our not mini Cooper up to this manor, and the game begins, and two things jump out at me. The first is, we have 360 degrees of vision. I don't know why, but I wasn't expecting this. Serena had the same thing, but for whatever reason, I was expecting this to be a 2D screen-based point and click, but no, it's full 3D. All right. And the second thing that jumped out at me is this. Oh my god, I'm uncomfortable. I mean, just look at this screenshot. But wait, that's no screenshot, Painticus, that's live gameplay. Look at how goddamn still the world is. There are no leaves rustling, no birds chirping, no distant traffic. The world feels dead. And listen, that's no complaint, that's a huge plus. For most other games, having a dead world is bad because it makes your game feel characterless and flat. But in horror, it provides an unrivaled sense of dread. Amnesia The Dark Descent did the opposite thing. When standing still in darkness in that game, everything would move around. And that works well, because it makes Brennenberg, the setting of Amnesia, feel organic, like the very walls are out to get you. And that makes you paranoid. But the opposite approach is equally valid. Unless, of course, you are, uh, Amnesia, a machine for pigs. In which case, ah, you know, you win some, you lose some. Anyway, we make our way over to the manor, and we just, sort of, look around the place. The core gameplay is just what you'd expect from a point-and-click game, that is to say there's a significant degree of pointing involved, and a comparable level of clicking too, alongside a fair chunk of reading and exploration. And as for the house itself, it's great! If you love antique furniture, exotic relics, deafening silence, endless suspense, and <laughs> then this is the perfect house for you! Oh, and uh, did I mention, I have never been more unnerved! This house is peak creepy and nothing has even happened yet. When I covered Alone in the Dark, I made it pretty clear that, for the most part, it wasn't even remotely scary. Well, knockity knock, Alone in the Dark has been working out for 13 years, eating nothing but steroid-infused human flesh, because Scratches is everything Alone in the Dark wanted to be, with all of the weird shit removed. Like in Alone in the Dark, you'd open up a door and find a ghost pirate cultist swinging at you with his sword, and your reaction would be, ah, oh, okay, I'll just take out my bow and deal with this the sensible way. But in Scratches, you open a door which by itself has this creepy Resident Evil style animation to find an empty bathroom. And my reaction was, ah, I, I don't wanna. And that is for multiple reasons. The visuals, the audio design, the atmosphere, and the control scheme come together to form a wonderful harmony of outright despair. You know, I think we should take a break from the general uneasiness and suspense to do some light reading. They grabbed his legs in twos and threes and twisted them in a manner I dare not describe. His face was disfigured with their bare fingernails and teeth, and his torso soon disappeared under the frenzied tangle of hands. Well, that's, uh, yep, yeah, that's good. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's just get back to it. If you're like me and you're a fan of H.P. Lovecraft and his work, you'll find a lot to like in Scratches. 
Not in the sense that there's some great cosmic threat to our eldritch sites, but more in the narrative format, the story itself, and the general atmosphere. Foreboding is how I would describe this game, and that's how I would describe Lovecraft's work too. And this doesn't surprise me, as the developers have definitely taken inspiration from HPL in the past, and continue to do so today. Now, I haven't really spoken about it so far, so let me give you a quick rundown of the actual story. You're in 1970s Britain, which explains why everything looks a bit sad, and you've decided to move into the old Blackwood Manor, a house that's been abandoned for some time, in order to get away from the hijinks of society to write your new book in peace. Now, you might say the whole secluded writer idea is a pretty cliched setup, but the game also says that, so, uh, yeah, beat you to it, nerd. And, you know, I don't think cliches are inherently bad. I mean, look at the Shawshank Redemption. That's basically one large cliche, but it's widely considered one of the best movies ever made, and rightly so. Anyway, this old manor, as many scholars would say, is very spooky. The electricity doesn't work, there are odd artifacts around, there are haunted paintings, and it's entirely likely that there are dust mites too. So, overall, this place is bad news, and the goal of the game is to annoy your friend Jerry by calling him every three minutes, and after a while of doing this, the game sits you down and it says, Are you having an appropriately eerie time? Yes, sir, Mr. Scratch, as I most certainly am. Good stuff, because now the scary shit begins. Now's a good time to explain what type of horror Scratch is. is. It's not visceral horror like Saw, or creeping vulnerability like Amnesia, or even paranormal terror like most ghost stories. Scratch's is ominous. And that is my favorite kind of horror. But what does ominous mean? Google's definition is fine, but it doesn't fully explain it. Not to me, anyway. And it's difficult to put it into words, so instead, here are some examples of ominous things. In 1959, nine hikers were found dead in the Ural Mountains of Russia. Six had died from hypothermia, and three from blunt force trauma. One was found missing her eyes and her tongue. Now that alone is disturbing, but the story is not that simple, and here is where it gets ominous. No signs of physical assault were shown. One body was highly irradiated. The tents they'd been staying in had been torn open from the inside. The more you look into the Dyatlov Pass incident, the more questions are raised. That's a prime example of an ominous event, but I have another example if that hasn't done it for you. The opening to the story, The Phenomenon. It's an emergency broadcast that says this. Please remain in your homes. If you are not at home, find shelter immediately. Close all blinds and shades block out all windows. Do not look outside, do not look at the sky, do not make noise. You see, that kind of horror is not gonna make you scream, it's not gonna make you nauseous, it's just going to make you think. The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear, and the oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. And that's a quote I wholeheartedly relate to. But I know some people disagree. If you expect screamers or violence or action in your horror, you won't be impressed by scratches. But if the sound of clawing from behind long abandoned bricks unnerves you, if the discovery of a hidden, unmarked, and barricaded door lights that insatiable spark of terrified curiosity, and if the absolute and inexplicable stillness of nature chills you, then Scratches is the perfect experience. Anyway, we get woken up by some unexplained noise, a sort of scoring or maybe marking of the walls with a sharp or pointed object. There must be a word for that. And the true Scratches starts here. The music, lighting, general ambience, atmosphere, and everything else really steps it up a notch and makes the game's intro feel casual by comparison. And even though I evidently enjoy horror games, I admit I have the mental constitution of someone five times my junior. I genuinely got to the point where I'd be covering my eyes when walking through doors and taking off my headphones for a bit of oral respite from this cursed music. And I think this type of horror affects me more than most people, at least I'd imagine so, because it denies me my strength. Adrenaline. To many people, in Amnesia the Dark Descent, the water monster chase is among the scariest encounters they've ever had. But for me, my fight or flight response kicks in and I basically autopilot my way through it. But you can't do that in scratches. You can't run, you can't hide, you cannot sneak past your problems. You can only slowly approach them, one click at a time. It's so unnatural, and it's incredible. On a related note, the game does something a little unorthodox with horror games. It makes your protagonist brave, or at the very least, very determined. He finds out that all this weird creepy stuff is going down, and his reaction is like, ah, cool, 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 let's start rappelling down a rope in a storm and get excited when we hear about murder. Now, he's not always this enthusiastic, but when he's not enthusiastic, you know there's some serious voodoo shit going down and you should immediately leave. 
This is unorthodox because most games get you to relate to the protagonist as a way to immerse you, but the atmosphere here is good enough to immerse us anyway, so they're free to give us a character that forces us to do some unpleasant stuff. And you know, now I'm noticing a pattern. The game takes away your animalistic reactions of adrenaline and forces you to confront your fears slowly and manually. It also gives you a character that often has opposing intent to the average player, but you can't change that. You have to do things the way the game wants you to. You can't even change the resolution. So to summarize, Scratches makes you its bitch. It forces you out of your comfort zone and locks the door, or more fittingly, it bricks up the doorway. Now so far I've been almost entirely praising the game, but it's not perfect. It has several issues, none of which are particularly egregious, mind you, but they are notable nonetheless. I'll split them into three categories. Subjective problems, objective problems, and... Well, I think it's actually a good thing, but if other games start to do this, I will be very cross problems. Uh, we can rename that one to... Eh. So starting with the subjective problems, this is an adventure game, but more specifically, you could call it a hidden object game, which can be very frustrating if you're not big into the genre. And if you're not, I recommend using a text-based walkthrough. That way you still get all of the horror out of the game without any of the frustration. As for the objective problems, the voice acting. It's fine for the most part, but the main character's voice does go from American to English at the drop of a hat and I'm not entirely sure why that happens. There's also some minor visual glitches here and there, like the door to the attic opening the wrong way, the sky being oddly black on the first day, that kind of stuff. I can look past, it's very minor and it doesn't really affect the experience. But there is one very strange issue, and that's with the director's cut of the game. So that added an alternate ending, and an extra epilogue chapter, and you know, that's cool stuff. But weirdly, the two are not compatible with one another. If you get the alternate ending and then play the epilogue, you will have no idea what's going on. It's only compatible with the original ending. I... I... I mm, that just confuses me. Now on to the... eh... problems. The pacing. Generally, the pacing was very good. However, it breaks a fundamental rule of horror. Respite. Here's a very rough graph of Amnesia the Dark Descent's pacing from high intensity to low intensity. Notice it starts slowly and builds up until the archive tunnels, then suddenly drops upon reaching the back hall. Then it quickly builds up again for storage before lowering for the machine room. And those breaks get shorter and shorter as you go on. That is good pacing. Here is Agony's graph. You get dropped into hell. You can't really get worse than that. Bad pacing. But here is Scratch's graph. The intensity is always increasing. Always. You never get relief. For most games this would be bad, but this is kind of part of Scratch's identity, and fittingly that increasing tension is applicable to basically all of HP Lovecraft's work too. So it's definitely an inspired choice, but again, this should not become the norm. It works here, let's not overdo it. But you know, the issues I mentioned here, I can kind of look past them. There's a habit in the game review culture where people annihilate games for having slight problems. I'm not like that. These things, whatever. It's a great game, and those problems do not hold it down. And having now finished the game, keeping in mind the different types of horror I mentioned earlier, I can safely say that Scratches is the scariest game I have ever played. And do you know how many jump scares there are? None. Well, I mean, some people would argue that there are jump scares, but they are remarkably tame in comparison to most, and I say that as someone who is very sensitive to jump scares. Nothing about this game's horror is cheap. It earns every scare it gives you. Now I mentioned in my last video that Scratches was a kind of icon of horror for me. It was a game that was recommended to me many times but I never played it. Until now. And you know what? I'm glad I didn't play it until now. Had I played this 12 years ago, I wouldn't have made it past the first night. I wouldn't have appreciated its wonderful atmosphere or Lovecraftian formatting. It would have been wasted on me. There's something oddly poetic about it being removed from storefronts. It's now some hidden relic of what horror can be. The game makes several references to books like The Necronomicon, De Vermis Mysterius, De, de, ver, de Vermi Mysterii, The Mysterious Vermin, and so on. And in an odd twist of fate, Scratches has become a video game equivalent to one of these. A dark secret only to be found by a few. And with the quality of the game itself in mind, and the fascinating position of the game within the horror genre, as well as my own sentimental feelings towards it, let's rank it. Despite its flaws, I have to say it's among the best. And in fact, I will go as far as to say that Scratches is the best game I have covered so far. 
if you want to play the game for yourself, refer to my previous review of Serena, and I mentioned how to get it there. And with that, I'm brought to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you've enjoyed this, and leave a comment and like and whatnot, and I'll see you another time. Goodbye. You know, the thing that I can't get over is that this game, by all reasonable assumptions, should have disappointed me, but it didn't. Twelve years of build-up and it lived up to it. And believe me, I went into this thinking I'd be underwhelmed. There is only one game with more build-up for me, and it's Time Splitters 4, which, by the way, is looking less unlikely than ever, unless they give Dambuster another wholly unremarkable IP to work with first. <laughs> oh, they have. Son of a bitch.